Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna do an example of a related rate problem. Uh, we're told that water is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. And we wanna use that information to figure out how fast the radius of the balloon is gonna be changing when the diameter is 25 centimeters. The idea in a related rates problem like this, and basically any related rates problem is sometimes we wanna know a certain rate of change. It's really hard to measure uh, by hand, but we might use an easier to measure rate of change to find the rate of change of interest. And that's the case here. If we're actually in this physical situation, uh, holding onto a water balloon as it's being filled with water, um, it'd be easy to kind of measure or control how much water you are pumping into that balloon, but it'd be hard to kind of hold the tape measure as it's being filled with water and measure the radius or the diameter. The idea here is if we know how much water is being pumped into the balloon, we should be able to figure out how fast the balloon is growing. And so I approach pretty much all of these related rate problems in the same way. After reading the problem, I identify what do I not know and what am I trying to figure out? And then after that, I identify what I do know and what might help me figure out what I do not know. So to get started, let's identify what don't we know or what do we want to know? So in this problem, what we want to know is going to be some rate, right? It's a related rate problem. And so if we read the problem again, we can probably figure out what it is we are searching for, what we want to know. And that last sentence, I think, gives it away. We're asked, how fast is the radius of the balloon changing? So we're being asked for the rate of change of the radius of the balloon. And so we're looking for the derivative of the radius. The rate of change of the radius is given by the derivative. But now we just have to know what are we differentiating with respect to. It's usually going to be time, but we have to be careful and uh, make sure of that. And the way I usually figure out is I look at some of the other rates or information that is given and what are the units involved with those rates. Here we're told one rate is 100 cubic centimeters per second. And so the denominator of that rate is time, seconds. So we're going to want to eventually differentiate everything with respect to time. So what we're looking for, what we want to know is dr dt, the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. So after we've identified what we want to know, we then identify what we do already know about our situation that can help us find, in this case, dr dt. So we read the problem again and fill in what we do know about the situation. So we're told the water is being pumped into a spherical balloon. So our balloon is gonna look something like this. In this case, it might not actually be very helpful to draw this picture, but usually given the opportunity to draw a picture, I will take it. So let's see, we have a spherical balloon, a water is being pumped into this balloon at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. And so if we look at the units involved with that rate, cubic centimeters is a unit of volume, seconds is a unit of time. So that rate must be describing the rate of change of volume with respect to time, dv dt, we know dv dt is 100 cubic centimeters per second. All right, so what else do we know? Well, we know we're working with a balloon and the volume of the balloon and the radius of the balloon. So we're gonna need some equation that relates those quantities together. We're gonna need that volume equation for our spherical balloon or the volume equation for a sphere. And the volume of any sphere is given by 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. And so there's one last piece of information we haven't really used yet, and that is the diameter of our balloon at our moment of interest is 25 centimeters. If we look at our quantities involved so far, we don't have any diameters uh, showing up, but we do have the radius showing up, and the relationship between the radius and the diameter is that the radius is always half the diameter. So if at our moment of interest, the diameter is 25 centimeters, the radius must be half of that, it must be 12.5 centimeters. Okay, so we've gathered all the information we want to know and what we already know. Now we're ready to actually find the equation that relates our rates together. And we always are gonna find that equation by differentiating the equation that relates the original quantities together implicitly, usually with respect to time or whatever our derivatives are taken with respect to. All right, so let's go ahead and differentiate our equation with respect to time. So we're gonna have to take the derivative with respect to time of the left-hand side, and then that'll be equal to the derivative with respect to time of the right-hand side. So 
We are differentiating with respect to time, not with respect to volume or radius. So we're gonna have to pretend that the volume and the radius are functions of time or t and use the chain rule or that process of implicit differentiation. The left-hand side is pretty straightforward. If we differentiate it with respect to time, we just get dv dt. For the right-hand side, we have to proceed a little more carefully, right? If we were differentiating with respect to r, we could just use our power rule. But here, we're differentiating with respect to t, not r. So we're gonna have to pretend r is a function of t and use the chain rule along with the power rule or that generalized power rule. So the generalized power rule says, uh, take your exponent and bring it out front as a factor. So we'll get three times four thirds pi. Remember, four thirds pi is just a constant factor. So we use our constant multiple rule for that piece of our derivative. Then going back to that power of r, we've already brought the exponent down. Now we have to decrease it by one. That's where the power rule would stop, but we're using the generalized power rule. It has that one extra step. We have to multiply by the derivative of the base, or if you're thinking of using the chain rule, the derivative of the inner function. And here our base or our inner function is just r. So its derivative will just be dr dt. Okay, we can simplify this just a little bit, maybe cancel out that common factor of three in the numerator and denominator of our right-hand side. But after doing that, we now have our equation that relates our rates together. So now we can find our rate of interest just by plugging in the information we know about these other values in our equation. So we know that the derivative of the volume with respect to time was 100 cubic centimeters per second. I'm not gonna include the units there, I'll just make it messy. And that is gonna be equal to four pi times our radius squared. Remember our radius is half of that diameter value, it's 12.5 centimeters. We can't forget to square that radius value and then multiply it by the rate we we're actually looking for, dr dt. That describes how the radius is changing as time goes on. Okay, so to finish this problem off, we just have to isolate dr dt. It's just multiplied by this number out front. So now we just divide both sides by four pi times 12.5 squared. And we find that dr dt is equal to exactly 100 over four pi times 12.5 squared. And if we use our calculator or a computer to assist us in calculating that, just approximate it, we should get a value of about 0 0.05. And now let's remember what our units are for this rate of change. It's just gonna be the units of the radius per units of the denominator or per units of time. So the radius had units of centimeters and time was measured using units of seconds. So at this particular moment in time, we know the radius of our spherical balloon is growing at a rate of about uh, five one hundredths of a centimeter per second.